Good afternoon. If you happen to have a copy of the authorized version of the scriptures, please go ahead and grab it. And please read along with me if you can. Word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Kind of, this is going to be kind of a follow-up to the video that was done on Wednesday. <laughs> okay? Please, if, if you have an authorized version of the scriptures, please go ahead and grab it and read along with me word for word. Verse by verse of these scriptures we will be looking at today. You need to read along with me because I make mistakes, okay? I make mistakes sometimes. So read along with me, all right? Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things are so. Okay? All right? From the book, today is the 7th. And I am a proponent for reading the Proverbs and the corresponding Ecclesiastes and the corresponding Song of Solomon. And also, you can incorporate uh, the book of Romans into that, or however, that to read a corresponding, like, proverb for the day. Today is the 7th. Okay, but in Ecclesiastes 7, Ecclesiastes 7, verses 25 on to verse 29. I applied mine heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom through the Lord. And the reason of things. <laughs> and to know the wickedness of folly. Even the foolishness of madness. Madness is insanity. The foolishness of madness. Madness means crazy. Foolishness is behaving as if you are saying in your heart. You are behaving as if you say in your heart there is no God. Okay? And folly. Okay? Fools make a mock at sin. Okay? And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hand as bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. But the sinner shall be taken by her. When you read the scripture, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is likened unto that of a beautiful woman. And it's done so purposely to give us a visual, if you were, or to give us a concept of how precious, how beautiful the fear of the Lord is. Okay? You, you, that, that's undeniable. I mean, you read Proverbs uh, 7, which we're going to look at a little bit here, and also Proverbs 8, and many other places in Scripture where wisdom, the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, fear of the Lord is likened unto a beautiful woman. But see, what does it mean to be anti? Anti, to replace, and also to be against. Antiperspirant, okay, to replace your natural stink with something fake, okay? But against, to try to prevent you from sweating under your underarm. That's a, <laughs> that's a gruff uh, example, but it's a perfect example indeed. Anything, listen to me, dear friend. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. That's an exclusive statement. God is a God of exclusivity. God is a God of specificity. We covered that in Wednesday's video. Okay? He is. Any other way that you can come up with, or any other way that is indigenous to your kindred is false. It doesn't matter. 
It's not, well, you're saying your way. Uh, Jesus Christ, he is the way. Okay? All that came before him were thieves and robbers. And a thief cometh but only but to what? To kill and to destroy. They boot the door, and Jesus Christ is the door. They boot the door so that they can climb up some other way. And if you do that, if you, dear friend, climb up some other way, you are a thief and a robber, and you are consenting with your father, the devil, Satan. Now see, what you need to understand is, when you exalt yourself as your own authority, you are as your father, the devil. Your belief on that is irrelevant. That's, that's just a fact. That's just the fact. Okay? All right? But here, let's read verse 26 again. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands is bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. So to be anti is to be against and to replace. So, in Scripture, you see wisdom likened onto the beauty of a woman. Okay? And remember, Scripture says that woman is the glory of man. Okay? And remember there, women. Okay? Yeah, you got a problem with me? No, you got a problem with God. You were made for man. Man wasn't made for you. Okay? That's just blunt how it is. But see, anti, against and replace, Satan has counterfeit, of course. When you go to Proverbs 7, Proverbs 7, you are only as relevant as your latest video. <laughs> Proverbs 7, verses 4, on to verse 15. Say unto wisdom, the fear of the Lord, Thou art my sister, and call understanding, departing from evil, thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. Not strange in behavior, unknown to such. A stranger. To keep thee from the strange woman, that they may keep thee, excuse me, from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. God loves you unconditionally. There are many paths to God. That's your truth, not my truth. Just believe and receive. You need to go to the church that Christ founded. <laughs> okay? You're elect because of your skin color. And you all call me a kindredist. Yeah. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. And when you look at verse 21 in Proverbs 7, With her much fair speech, she causeth him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Forced him. Sounded so good, so lovely. Sin is painted up in a beautiful portrait. Uh, again, in Ezekiel chapter 28, Satan, uh, the anointed cherub that covereth, Adorned with all these precious stones, uh, gold, uh, beautiful in sound, the sound of his pipes, okay? You know, ah, <laughs> that kind of thing, okay? Flattery, flattery, love bombing. God loves you unconditionally. That, dear friend, is the most disgusting lie there is. One of the most. The greatest lie of all of all mankind is ye shall be as gods, but that God loves you unconditionally. Look, dear friend, like I told you Wednesday, 
God doesn't love you. Okay? You get and these and these guys, man. These guys, these Christians. There's this uh, well-fed elderly gentleman, I use that sparingly, who wears a, a baseball cap with a hot dog on it, and he he's falls into line and he he recommends the authorized version. Yes, he does. But he falls into line with all the heresy. God loves you. No, he doesn't. You can't judge me. Yes, I can. You know why? Because I judge myself through a perfect standard. Therefore, I can judge you. Let's continue. And forced him. Sounds so good to be true. Sounds so alluring. Okay? And no marvel. For his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. Let's continue. Verse 6 in Proverbs 7. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and I beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, kid, a young man void of understanding, departing from evil. We covered this quite a bit in Wednesday's um, video, which will be in the description box for you. I forgot what I called that, but yes, Wednesday's video, okay? But a young man void of understanding, departing from evil, all right? Passing through the street near her corner. Whose corner? The, who is this woman that's being described here? It isn't the fear of the Lord. I'll tell you, I believe that Proverbs 7 is a direct, direct reference onto Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That's Revelation 17. You, dear friend, in an authorized version, you get off your duff and you go read that for yourself. Revelation 17, okay? That's talking about Roman Catholicism, okay? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Harlots. Christianity. Oh, yeah, you heard me right. Islam. Mormonism. Taoism. Shintoism. Hinduism. Okay? We can go on and on. There's only one way. There's only one way. There isn't an option B or C. Okay, there's only one way. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, son. Okay, you understand? Let's continue. Passing through the street near her corner. She's a harlot. She's on every street corner. Here in America, we got the Lutherans right there, the German Catholics. We got these disgusting Methodists right down the way there. We have a Hispanic um, uh, church building right over there. Uh, down the road, we got the <laughs> Presbyterians, the Episcopalians, of course. You got uh, Rome over there. It's a smorgasbord. You can go out there and find any building you want. It's harlotry. Passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house. Her house. This counterfeit to wisdom, the fear of the Lord. The mother of harlots, Mystery Babylon. German Catholic, Lutherans. Methodists. The Hispanics over there. Whatever they are, I think they call themselves non-denominational. Which is a denomination. Okay? You got the Presbyterians. You got the Episcopalians and the Catholics. Okay? In the e in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, twilight that time before it gets night, okay. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart, dressed appealing to the eye. It's warm, summertime now, here in Illinois. And you're seeing these women 
dressed like harlots. And most most of you lost people. <laughs> I don't need to see that. I don't want to see that. Okay, that's disgusting. By Brad, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? Huh? And 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 the, the women out there dressed like whores, and then a man, you know, dangle a piece of meat in front of them, and they look, and then they they accuse you of being the bad guy for looking at them because they're dressed like a whore. It's like the rabbit trail. You know, I've seen some of these videos about these these individuals that go to these gyms. You know, these gym G Y M. Okay, to work out and stuff. And hey, you want to, whatever, why you don't do that at home? Don't know, but hey. But see, they have this thing where if a guy is doing, just looking at one of these women in that situation, dressed like a whore, dressed in tight things, showing off their body, doing positions and stuff like that. It's a recipe for disaster. But see, if a man even looks, I've seen the videos of it. Okay, when I was doing that, that research on that whore, um, uh, what's her name? Not Roma Downer. She's a disgusting whore herself. But the Roma Army, Rome Army, uh, she did a couple of videos uh, addressing that. And she, she's a devil herself. But, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. All those bright stones glittering off of him and his ministers transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Right away, y'all think about religion. Uh, minister, that encompasses it, but minister of righteousness also encompasses other things. A doctor, a lawyer, okay? Minister of righteousness. She's subtle of heart. Subtle. Her much fair speech, her flattery. God loves you. Anyway, we'll do. Hey, hey, we all believe in the same God, right? You have your <laughs> weird Shintoism or <laughs> that nonsensical Buddhist. <laughs> you know, Buddhism, Buddhism is entertainment. I mean, like I told you before, I wish I, I still had that book about Buddhism. Because uh, that was an entertaining story. It was. It was entertaining. It was amusing. <laughs> okay, it really was. Um, Buddhism is all about self. You. <laughs> okay? It's all about you. Faith that was once delivered unto the saints is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I got to say this. Even religions like Islam is more uh, gendered towards Satan, you know, their fish, moon, God, Dagon, Satan, okay? But at least it's pointed to something other than themselves where Buddhism, and I'm not justifying Islam, you, you poor uh, sons of Ishmael, you're, you're patsies, you're, you're fodder, you're, you're expendable masses to that man of sin, the son of perdition, after we get out of here. But, I mean, Buddhism is pretentious, that because it's all about yourself. I, I, um, I, I've talked to some Buddhists. Um, they're a little difficult to talk to, but, you know, when you, 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 you scratch a Buddhist uh, and you'll see that civility uh, <laughs> drop, okay? And yeah, I'll give you that. Sure, it could be my attitude. The longer you walk with the Lord, the harder it gets. And the harder it becomes to keep silent in certain situations, when you see certain things, it's like, ugh. Why does it seem with Christians? And oh, and by the way, thank you. Thank you, by the way, for saying that I'm not a Christian. Thank you. I know you intended it to be a dig, <laughs> which it isn't. But I, thank you. Thank you. You're right. I'm not a Christian. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm a saint. Okay? I am. All right? I'm not a Christian. Thank you. 
Like I said, you, you meant that as a dig. He's like, he's not a Christian. Hey, you're right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you figured that one out. Okay? Verse 11. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Uh, a woman is to be the keeper of, at home. To guide the house. Man's supposed to be out there doing whatever he's got to do to provide. Okay? But see, the woman is supposed to be a keeper at home. Okay, you read Proverbs 31, okay, and uh, the woman of God, uh, if I rem I'll remember, I'll put that in the, in the um, description box, okay, woman of God, all right, God's not against a woman having an income, but it's always in the context of the home, okay, and we're all in the ministry of reconciliation, but hey, Scott, you know, you idiot, when you put your lovely helpmeet, on a public forum like this, <laughs> teaching men, okay, you're in violation of scripture. I ain't, I ain't even going to go off on that guy, okay? He's double going to hell. But anyway, see, wisdom is peaceable, pure. The wisdom that comes from above, excuse me, is first peaceable, gentle, pure, easy to be entreated, full of good fruits. Where the wisdom of that is of this world, which is first earthly, sensual, devilish. It's all about the sight of the eyes. It's all eye candy. Subtle. Abideth not in their house. Now is she without. Now in the streets. And lieth in wait at every corner. Hey, you got the German Catholics right there. Like I said, you got the Methodists over there. Okay? Yeah, she's everywhere. Who is this? Rome! Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Everywhere. Everywhere. And mostly noted in Christianity. So, she caught him and mwah, 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 kissed him, love bombed him. And with an impudent face said unto him, okay, so she caught him and kissed him. Verse 5. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger with flat, which flattereth with her words. Verse 21. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Look, dear friend. You guys are glazed over with this disgusting Christianity and this passive... Um, sissified thing of religion. God loves you. Don't scare them. Scare them. Love them into the kingdom. You're right. I'm a little. I'm a little coarse. You're right. I'm a little gruff. Uh, I I fret not man. Okay. I, I'm not like our sweetheart brother uh, from Croatia who is a lot more gentle than I am. And will be. You'll, you'll see eventually uh, that he, he's more gentle than I am in this regard. Uh, I, I won't hesitate if need be. I won't hesitate to get in your face. <laughs> Especially when it comes regards to truth. Okay, A brawler, not physically forcing someone at sword point, uh, your belief, or cramming things down their throat. But um, when it comes to defending the truth and standing up for the truth, if i got to get in your face, I will. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I fear the Lord. I don't fear you. All right? All right, so yeah, I, I, I can. And I've, I've, I've blown many opportunities because of that. Yes, I have. But see, there's a time and place for everything. Okay? And the enemy who will do worse to you, but do it with flattery. Like that, that jerk from uh, uh, Blackpool. He, he comes off like such a smooth-sounding guy, but uh, the track record, he, he's a vile, filthy devil who uh, um, spreads Rome's dung over everything he touches. But yet all the while, so civil, so polite, so contrite, so, so soothing. We call that dragon speak. 
You expect the dragon to speak like ah! They do, but generally. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace off I I have peace offerings with me. Hey, come with me, my way, hey. Just believe and receive. See how easy that is? And then you can go along your way living like a devil. And then at the end of the day, have your cake and eat it too. It don't work that way. This day have I paid my vows. I'm clean. Look at me. Therefore came I forth to meet thee. It's all about you. It's all about you and about how you feel. So you go to a church building or you go to your, your temple or your whatever, right? It's all about you. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, you. It's all about you. Diligently, therefore came I forth to meet thee. Diligently to seek thy face. And I have found thee. Go back to Ecclesiastes 7. Picking up at verse 27. Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. Now, we're in light of what we just looked at in Proverbs 7, uh, you know, in verse 26, where he refer, refers to uh, being saved from the woman whose heart's, heart is snares and nets, and that the sinner shall be taken by her, reference on to what is fake, false religion, Christianity, Buddhism, Taoism, Shintoism, Islam, and the list goes on and on. Hinduism, whatever ism you want to call it. Okay, it's all fake. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, will rescue you from that. Okay? So, Solomon is saying amongst all these fake things out there, amongst all that is fake, he hasn't found one. Okay? I have encountered... The depths, the depths of man's depravity to justify themselves is full of wonder. I have encountered sodomites who have come to verse 28 there to justify men with men. I have. I have. There's nothing worse than, uh, well, okay, a Catholic who thinks they know the, oh, what God said. That, that's pretty bad. Okay, but there's nothing worse than some atheist, self-theist, or someone who has no belief on the Lord Jesus Christ at all coming around trying to take what God said and use it as a form of attack. And they do that and can do that because people aren't being brought up in the scriptures, barely even a Bible. But I have, I have encountered guys who is like, well, it says right there, so see, I mean, there's not a woman out there, so what else is there, you know? And No. You run into a problem with the book of Leviticus and also with Romans chapter 1. Okay, hey, it's Pride Month! Check out the thing on Pride, Sodomy, um, and the playlist that's on the channel, okay? <laughs> this doesn't justify that. What's being talked about is there's only one way. And all that is fake, all that is fake, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found. And one man, one man among a thousand have I found. Hold the place. Second Timothy, First Timothy chapter 2 again. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. Verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those, but a woman among all those have I not found. Hmm. 
was through Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Hmm. And also, looking at verse 28 again, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Many inventions. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verses 30 on 32. Romans 1. 30 on 32. Read the book of Romans sometime, lost man, lost woman. Okay? Romans chapter 1. Verses 30 on verse 32. Backbiters. Haters of God. Despiteful. Proud. Hey! Hey! Today's hey, hey, it's, it's Pride Month, right? Boasters. Boasting in your pride, huh? Inventors of evil things. Inventing. They come up with evil things. They just come up in the uh, community section uh, somewhere on there. Um, there was the one scientist guy uh, talking to a one trans woman who was pretending to be a guy with big like uh, hula hoops in her in her ears, and um, he was arguing the scientific: if you have this this chromosome, you're a man; if you have this this chromosome, you're a woman. Okay, he was, he, and the one girl said to him, "Why are you looking at the the? Why are you only doing the science of this?" And the guy says, "Like the science, okay. Even science tells you that there are only two genders. But see, inventors of evil things. There's only two genders, okay." Only two. This is the product of this ridiculous woke nonsense. Woke. Stupid. Stupid. How here in America? Uh, because you, the woke thing isn't that prevalent outside of America, it seems. Okay? It really isn't. Okay? Especially when you bring up... I've, I've looked into this. Um, I mean, there are pockets of these idiots, and I'm being polite... There are pockets of these idiots in other nations, but like uh, in uh, Muslim countries, it's like, what do you mean? There's only a man and woman. What are you talking about? In Shemitic countries, like Japan, it's like, what do you mean? Uh, in Japan, there appears to be some of this woke nonsense as well, but more so the, Shem the Shemites in Japan, the Japanese are Shemitic, uh, they kind of, it's like, there's only two, okay? But inventors of evil things. Enemies who want to attack saints who can't find anything, they'll invent stupid things. Disobedient to parents. Without understanding, departing from evil. Covenant breakers. Covenant breakers, they don't keep their word. Without natural affection. Implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. You're on a highway to hell, and all your friends are going to be there too. And you, some of you boast about that. <laughs> oh, I don't believe in hell. Well, that, that. I'm very proud of you. It's very nice. Remember that the minute you get there. And don't worry. The Lord will remind you. You know, I sent you my saints to warn you. But you didn't listen. Imagine, dear friend. I, I, I know you, you don't believe in hell. That, that's your problem, dude. Uh, once you get there, you'll, you'll be a firm believer. And hey, you've been warned. Imagine being in some place like hell, 
But before, uh, you know, it's appointed on the men once to die and after that to judgment. But before you get down there, um, it's like, you were warned. You were warned. The very one that you reject, you're going to stand and give an account of to him. And then you're going to go and burn. <laughs> okay? So, imagine that. Try, wrap that. You're, hey, you're the, you're the brilliant one. You're the educated one trained by Jesuits. You know, you got, uh, you got an education. Blow that around in your head there, friend. You were said, I told you so, and then pff, down you go. And you're going to have to live with that for all eternity. Isaiah 37. Isaiah 37. I've learned more so recently that, you know, you got to, I, have to be diligent and vigilant because when it comes to refuting the disgusting thing that is called Christianity, we can... Uh, <laughs> video upon video upon video upon video uh, scripture upon scripture showing you the falsity the delusion that Christianity is that can become a distraction it can be I mean I mean when when self theists and other religions have enough sense to say that's fake um Okay, but then again, you got people trying to defend that sinking ship. It's a waste of time, brother. It's a waste of time, brother. And to refer to yourself as a saint is a lot more easier than you think. You haven't tried it. It's obvious. Isaiah 37. Verses 16 on to verse 20. Now, context, which is a sandwich. We talked about that in the last video. Sennacherib, okay, king of Syria, sent Rabshakeh to go taunt Israel. Okay? And uh, sent letters to Hezekiah, it's like, hey, you know, give up, that kind of stuff. And they, you know, of course, talked about, you know, your God isn't going to save you. Don't let Hezekiah deceive you and stuff like that. So Hezekiah, a godly king, a king who is up in heaven, absolutely, what does he do? Oh, Lord, he goes before the Lord and lays this letter down in front of the Lord. It's like, here. Here's my, here's the problem. I can't do it. See, 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 some of you guys, you get to that place. You get to that place of brokenness. Kind of. You get to a somewhat state of brokenness, but yet you still have this vestige of hope in your heart that you can do better. I, I knew a, a lovely tragic young man uh, who, who I would love to uh, I'd love to speak to him if you watch me please I'd, I'd love to speak to you again you know who you are um, just to just to see how you're doing um, he was at that point but yet still had that vestige within yourself that you can do better and see people will get people will get right to the edge of real true brokenness that leads on to salvation. They will. But see, the I can do better is still there in a lot of you. That means that you truly have not been shoom. And when someone is at that point and I can do better, just believe and receive. And for you people then, that clicks. It's like, well, I was broken. But just believe and receive. Just believe and receive. And they say to you, well, I, I was broken. But yet, you saved yourself by your own belief. 
Did you call on the name of the Lord? That, well, that's a word. And when you run into that brother, uh, sister, then you're just like, okay, it's like, here, take a track. Went, okay, fine. Uh, I'm going to the next one. Okay. But Hezekiah knew he couldn't do anything about it. Sennacherib with his army, you know, at, knocking on the door. Hezekiah takes it and lays it before the Lord, okay? Let's read 14 on to verse 20. And Hezekiah received a letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up onto the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. I, here's my, here it is. I can't do anything. I can't fix it. I, I'm hopeless. Lord, here it is. Help. Here it is. I can't do anything. My righteousnesses are as filthy rags. I'm not good enough. I can't do better. But see, again, a lot of people get to that point, but they still have it there in their hearts that I can do better. You weren't put on a sinking submarine. And the submarine, the Titan, imploded. So those guys would, I probably went to hell. Just, you know. Anyway. And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. And you, <laughs> brilliant evolutionists, call us crazy. <laughs> you guys think this is millions of... Woohoo! <laughs> you, are you smoking what day it is, huh? Must be. Must be. Okay? <laughs> Incline thine ear, O Lord, and hear. Open thine eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries, and have cast their little g-gods into the fire. For they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wooden stone. Therefore they have destroyed them, wooden stone. Things of the earth. Wood cannot abide fire. Stone usually does. I mean molten lava and stuff like that. Hmm. Kind of like Leviathan's uh, scales are his pride. His heart is as hard as the upper millstone. Hard heart. Now therefore, O Lord our God, Save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. And uh, Psalm 9, Psalm 9, verses 15 on to verse 20. Psalm 9, 15 on to verse 20. The heathen are sunk down into the pit that they made. The little quasi religion, whatever it is, if it ain't if it ain't of the Lord Jesus Christ, son, it's fake. It's of the devil. There is only one way. There's only one way. And look, you Hebraic Jews, okay, all right. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to keep the law today. You don't. We're going to address that, okay? Just because you are of the children of Israel, a Hebraic Jew, in this dispensation, in this dispensation, because you are a Hebraic Jew doesn't mean that you have to keep the law. Our brother James even fell into that trap. Now, well, you, you Gentiles, you've got this, but we, no, 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 we're going to address that today, Okay? 
You do not have to keep the law to be saved. Just be saved, be right with God. Hebrew, you don't. Today, you don't. You don't. And see, now I've known Messianic Jews. And I've known genuinely saved saints who are Hebraic Jews. Yes, I have. Oh, yes, I have. And I'll tell you what, brother, sister, you, you, you want to see, you want to see, you want to see a sight. You see a Hebraic Jew who's a saint defend his God. Go on, bud. I'll just sit back here. Hey, you need anything? Whistle. Okay? That, that's, that's a sight. That's a sight. It's like, oh. <laughs> Uh, and it's like when you encounter that, you're kind of like, oh, wow, if only all the Hebraic Jews were like this, this world would have been different. If the Hebraic Jews would have accepted their king and the Lord would have brought in the kingdom of heaven, none of this would have happened. It was prophesied that it was going to happen because, yes, God wants everybody to be saved, yes. But if Israel, unto whom pertain the commandments, the laws, and everything like that. If they had, when when a Hebraic Jew sees their God and us Gentiles, and it chafes them, and the Lord saves them, that that is a sight to behold. Like I said, brother, you're like, hey man, go ahead. You, you, yeah, yeah, remember, if you need me, I'm, I'm over here. Just, just whistle, buddy. Okay? Just whistle. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's continue. Verse 15. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made, and the net which they had hid is their own foot taken, snared in your own little quasi religions. Okay? The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. There's that thing about judgment. Which people who are in sin don't like people judging them. Okay? <clears throat> the Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higayon, Selah. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all nations that forget God. America. But hey, I, I, I have corrected this publicly already. You're right. America is a Christian nation. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. That, the um, Constitution, is a Masonic document. Okay? Remember, the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be a dictator. Hey, hey Christian! Christian, you some of you King James Bible in Christian, you do know that, right? I've talked to some of these King James Bible believing Christians who think that the kingdom of heaven is going to be a perfected form of the American Constitution. <laughs> I'm not joking. I, I, I've had, I've seen it. Our dear brother from Ohio, I think was, I think it was you, brother who sent me evidence of the, I, I'm pretty sure it was you, if, I'm, if it wasn't you, sorry, but I sent evidence of, you know, some of these King James Bible believing Christians who think that the kingdom of heaven is just going to be a refined, perfected form of this America? Of like that? You're on, you know, you're, you're smoking what Dade's smoking, aren't you? You're, you're on drugs. No, the kingdom of heaven is going to be a dictatorship. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Okay, uh, you, you need to you need to get that through your thick head. Okay, stop listening to, stop believing everything that Ruckman said, and his uh, subordinates, and. Go to the Lord yourself in his, in his word. Okay? Please. Please. The fruit of that man. Well, we, we ain't going off on that. Verse 18. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. 
The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Salah. Men. Just men. Just men. Mere men. Just men. Nothing special. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. Just men. Just men. God does not love you. God doesn't love you. You have bought into the lie that you are your own God. You have been coerced by the harlot. See, like we said, like I said to you on Wednesday, you have more to do with Rome than you think. Even those of you in Shemitic countries like Japan who kicked out the Jesuits, okay, who kicked out Christianity. There's even documents that speak against Christianity. And interestingly enough, you, Sh you Shemites in Japan, what you are protesting is Rome. It's funny. It's funny. You ever, you ever witnessed to a, a Japanese Shemite before? It, they're very similar to the Hebraic Jews because they're, you know, they're of Shem. But, uh, again, the thing is, Rome has influenced the thought on what God is. They really have. Because most people that we are going to encounter, in one way or another, have already over the centuries been influenced by the mother of Harlot, who is loud and stubborn, who is on every corner of the street, flattering you with her smooth words and stuff. You have been, you people have been influenced by Rome, and you don't even know it. So I, it, it just drives me up the wall when you see people who ought to know better with a tongue and death grip defend one of the biggest days to Roman Catholicism. It, it, it just, it just, it's full of wonder to me. You, you, you still got that Catholic baggage there, boy. And then you say, we have the liberty to do it. Well, yes, all things are lawful for you. But not that all things are expedient. It's, it doesn't matter if you're in Thailand or in Vietnam or Russia, or in Siberia, which is in Russia, as I understand it, or Norway, okay, or in Canada, eh? or in Mexico, eh? it doesn't matter, okay? There's only one way. There's only one way. And you have been affected. Your thought has been affected to look at Jesus in a other light than the light of Scripture. Who's God? Well, isn't it Jesus Christ? He, he's the second member of what you call a trinity? Oh, boy. Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah 15. And see... Over centuries of Satan's, yea, hath God said, of Satan giving you counterfeit, other options. It's a buffet line. Pick your religion. What happens? Jeremiah 15, verse 1. Only one verse to start here. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, Yet my mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight. And let them go forth. God does not love you. 
God does not love you. You reject the true gospel. You reject the true Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. God's love is not for you. God's wrath is for you. You are his enemy. Okay? God's love is there to be had. But see, you got to go the way of the cross, son. you got to go the way that is contrary to the sagging sin suit. But Satan gives you everything to compensate to um, whatever this sagging sin suit of yours. Buddhism. It's all about you. It's all about the religion of self is Buddhism. Okay? <laughs> and compassion is done not of a genuine compassion for the betterment of the other, but in Buddhism, compassion is there for the betterment of self. It kind of is a oxymoron if there ever was one. Okay? But Samuel... Of Moses and Samuel. If Moses and Samuel stood before the Lord, yet his mind, what does it say? My mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Psalm 99. Psalm 99. This, this, people, this is the reality that you guys are avoiding. And you Christians, this is a reality that you do not want to accept. Psalm 99, the Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims, let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the people. Ah, high above all the people. Ah, but see, but see, see what happens. The easy believest, save yourself by your own belief. You bring God down to your lever, you... You're on, you're on par with God because you save yourself. The self theist. They're up here. God is somewhere down there. Okay? Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is holy. The king's strength also loveth judgment. Thou dost establish equity. Thou executest judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. The earth is his footstool. Okay? Worship him on earth. Okay? Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among them that call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spake unto them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimonies and the ordinance that he gave them. Thou answeredest them, O Lord our God. Thou wast the God that forgavest them, though thou tookest vengeance of their inventions. Inventors of evil things sought out many inventions. Islam. Roman Catholicism. Taoism. Tao Te Ching. I got that, by the way. Shintoism. Buddhism. Hinduism. And any other ism you want to throw in there. Christianity. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. But see, in Jeremiah 15, verse 1, the Lord said, Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, Moses and Samuel did what the Lord told them to do. They were obedient. Remember, this is in another dispensation. Okay? Okay? That's the significance of that. Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Well, why is that? Why is that? <laughs> You've fallen for the harlot. You've fallen for the harlot. And her subtle ways. And you know the judgment of God and you have pleasure in them that do contrary to God just like you do. You are your own God again. 
Yeah. 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 And now Jeremiah 11. Jeremiah 11. Verses 7 on to verse 14. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. There comes a point, dear friend, where you will go so far from the Lord. And it's not that the Lord can't save you, but you will be so far gone, that heart of yours will be as hard as the upper millstone. Not that the Lord can't save you. You've gone past the point of no return. And there comes a point in a man and a woman's life where that happens. The impossible is possible with God. Yes, it is. But not by coercion. Remember that. Okay? <clears throat> Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods of whom they offer incense. But they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah. And according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Therefore, Pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or a prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me, for me for their trouble. There will be, There is a point where you can reach, dear friend, where you will be so far gone that you can't come back. It's not that the Lord can't save you. And when you cross that point, see, you reject the gospel. You reject the true Lord Jesus Christ. You're God's enemy. God doesn't love you. Okay? God's love is there for you. At the cross. When you run into these guys saying God loves you, it, it makes me sick. It makes me vomitous. It, it's disgusting. It's, the it's one of the biggest. It's not the biggest. It's one of the biggest lies in history. God loves you unconditionally. To the person who readily, openly admits that they like their sin and want their sin. And they look at the guy. You're saying God loves me, but he's going to send me to hell. Yeah, he is. You know why? Because you rejected him. He doesn't love you. He doesn't. God doesn't love you. Please get that through your head. <coughs> okay? Please. And see, knowing that God doesn't love you. And that his wrath is for you. That ought, to, that ought to scare the hell out of you a little bit. But see, there again, you have been influenced by Rome and not even knowing it to make God in this little, excuse me, flaccid little thing. And that you are greater than he. Just believe and receive. Right? You're an elect or... Whatever, or you, you, the eightfold path of toxic waste, or whatever, okay? <laughs> or, or you, you know, uh, action without action, whatever it says in the Tao Te Ching and stuff like that. It's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 10 under verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 10 and verse 12. Verse 9 on verse 12. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? There are two wisdoms. There is the wisdom that is from above, which comes from the Lord, and there is a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Sensual means led by your senses. What wisdom is in them? What wisdom is in them? 
Ain't the wisdom of the Lord. Ain't the fear of the Lord. I'll tell you that. Okay? Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness and the Lord abhorreth. Abhor means extreme hate. The covetous, okay? From the prophet even to the priest, every one dealeth falsely. You might consider yourself an honest individual, but if you are going a way that isn't the way of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, um, you're dealing falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace. And there is no peace. See, slightly make you feel at ease in your sin. These disgusting, easy believists are some of the worst at this. To pacify you in sin. To make you okay with sin. Because, hey, I just believe and receive, so it doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. At a great cost. At a great cost. Look at David. Why was, you know, David. Okay, David. Look at David. Okay. Yes, the Lord used David. But David paid an enormous price for his thin thing with Bathsheba. Okay. All right. I just lost my place. Okay. But yeah, there is no peace. See, the fake gives you a band-aid to be at peace with the evil that you have done. When a saint giving you the true Lord Jesus Christ cuts you, pricks you in your heart. See, like I told you, Jesus, the Jesus Christ who is is going to put his finger on that one thing you lack, friend. And as many of you have already figured out, Christianity comes to you... God loves you. Christianity comes at you. God loves you. <laughs> like I, but he loves you. <laughs> He's going to send you to hell, but he loves you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Verse 5 in Proverbs 7. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Verse 21, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield with the flattering of her lips. She forced him. Yield the, the hurt of my daughter slightly, saying, peace, peace. And there is no peace. And here's the problem. Verse 12. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. They were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. And, 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 and this Pride Month thing, grown men dressing up in, as women, and feminism is now being dominated by men pretending to be women. <laughs> and a woke woman... Or woke thing defending that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hey, Dave, you must be sharing your stuff with these people, huh, buddy? <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. They were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. You know, 20 years ago, the things that are going on today would have made people blush. Today? When, you, when you're outdoors and you see children dressed as whores, and it's like, oh, I don't think they're going to get Therefore shall they fall among them that fall, in the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Eventually, Exodus chapter 12, verses 12 on to verse 13. Exodus chapter 12, 
verses 12 on to verse 13. See, gods, 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 you know, little statutes like uh, the Buddha, the Roman Catholic Mary, uh, Ishtar, um, uh, whatever, um, Shimu, Astarte, and you know, stuff like that. But remember, idolatry is always the extension of the true idol, which is yourself. Exodus 12, verses 12 and 13. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, Egypt, for our instruction in righteousness, a type of the world. And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And gods like the frog god, the fly god, Pazuzu, and stuff like that. Uh, the, Egypt had a pantheon of gods. Funny. Rome has saints. They twist what a saint is. Okay, A saint is someone who is saved and or right with the Lord. But a saint, according to Rome, which, see, you people immediately think of because of Rome. See, you guys have been affected by Rome and you don't even know it. And it says here that he'll execute judgment against what? And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now, context, he's talking about, you know, Ra, which is on the American dollar bill, the sun god. You know, the eye of Horus on the pyramid and the symbol of Ra on the dollar bill, the American eagle. Okay, that's the symbol of Ra, the sun god. Okay. Okay. That is a Masonic document. The founders of America were Freemasons. Okay. And you're right. You're right. Whack job psychopath Eric John Phelps. You're right. They were Christians. You're right. You're right. Christianity is not the faith once delivered unto the saints. But see, God's eventually going to cast judgment on the gods of earth. Little G gods. Little G gods. Well, aren't we gods? Uh, don't get at me. Verse 12. No, verse 11. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, verse 13, excuse me. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. Ah, there's a mention of the blood. See, the Passover with the blood on the sides of the door and doorpost and up there were a sign, you know, a precursor of the cross. That does not mean that they were looking forward to the cross in the Exodus. They were not. Okay? We've talked about that before. They were not looking forward to the cross in like the Garden of Eden during the Exodus. There were types thereof of the cross with the blood on the side posts and on the upper part of the door. Yes, there were. There were signs of it. But they were not looking forward to the cross. They didn't know about it until it happened. Okay? Don't believe that lie. Don't believe that lie. Okay? For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite, okay, we already read that, verse 13. And the blood shall be for you, to be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt. And the blood shed on the cross of Jesus Christ. The blood, the atonement for our sin. Okay? All right? All right. Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Ye are gods. Um, Psalm 82. In the book of Genesis chapter 3, Satan tempts Eve by saying what? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Only God truly knows what is good and what is evil. Dude, look out your door. Look online. You got so many other people out of their own thing 
deciding what is good and what is evil. Okay? Man in and of himself is incapable of truly judging what is good and what is evil. Satan comes around and says, Hey, you do contrary to what God says, your eyes will be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. God is the only one who truly knows what is good and what is evil. The lie unto you is that you are your own God, and that you know better than God what is good and what is evil. You know better, huh? You know better. You don't know nothing. Okay? You don't know nothing. Alright? You don't know nothing. Psalm 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and, and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Except the persons of the wicked. Like these live streaming Christians who are like whores themselves and will have debates with anybody. It's one thing to be out there witnessing onto others. It's a one, another thing for entertainment's sake to bring people of opposing religious things where nothing gets accomplished just to entertain people. Okay? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice and afflict to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. They walk on in darkness. Your, your foundation is anything but Jesus Christ. I don't care how righteous you think you are. You're going to hell. Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the only way. Okay? I have said, ye are gods. And see, Pentecostals will take this, and uh, uh, Tony Robbins, uh, devils like that with neuro-linguistic programming, Jesuit-created uh, mind control technique, um, that you are God, meaning that you can create things with your mind, with your mouth. Now, I said, ye are, ye are gods, knowing good and evil, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men. You're men. Children of the Most High. Look, I, I, it doesn't matter if you want to accept this or not, it's irrelevant. God made you. God created you. God allowed you to be here. Okay? Your belief on that is irrelevant. That's just the fact, Jack. Okay? God made you. You're here. Period. Okay? But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. See, man's eyes were opened. And the lie, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And what happens? Look at, look at today. Evil is good and good is evil, according to the world. According to a lot of religious standards. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Yes, he will. God is angry at you. God does not love you. Okay? Okay? You reject the gospel, the true gospel, the true Lord Jesus Christ. God does not love you. God does not love you unconditionally. God's love is there for you to be had. Okay? He's the one who saves you. But he doesn't do it by coercion. Okay? You've got to make the right choices. Psalm 7. Psalm 7. Psalm 7. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. One God, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Psalm 7. Psalm 7. Verses 8 and verse 12. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness. 
and according to mine integrity that is in me. Dispensational difference, okay, under the law, all right? Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God trieth the hearts and reins. My defense is of God, who saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry at the wicked. Every day. Yes, he's angry at you. You reject the Lord Jesus Christ. You've heard the true gospel. The true Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You've heard of him. You've been offered the gospel. You reject it. God's angry at you. God's wrath is for you. He's angry at you. The, the contrary is actually the truth. To God loves you. Okay? And hey! People! Loves appears twice in Scripture. You, you, you look on King James Bible online, it says three. It only appears twice in the text of Scripture. And the text of Scripture is what is inspired. So loves appears twice in Scripture. Twice only. Loves. Once. Once. In Proverbs 7. And interestingly enough. Once in Song of Solomon. Chapter 7. Loves. Such as the harlot who love bombs you. Let us solace ourselves with loves, the love of sin. Whereas in Song of Solomon, okay, loves there is in context between the Lord and his bride, the body of Christ. Okay? The body of Christ. Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> and I, I, whenever, I, whenever I hear this, I pounce on this thing. Saint, you do the same thing. Nowhere. Nowhere in Scripture. Nowhere in Scripture does it say God loves you. Nowhere. Nowhere. And he said, well, John 3.16. That was before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? And that was in a belief of him as king. Okay? It wasn't in his death, burial, and resurrection because it hadn't happened yet. Okay? John 3.16 is not the gospel. All right? All right? And John 3.16, God so loved, past tense, and gave, past tense. God doesn't love you. God's love is there for you to, be, to have it. Yes, it is. You've got to make the right decision to go the way that he has elected and once you go down that path, he'll take care of the rest. Okay? But he's not going to force you to go that way. God does not love you. And you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, God is angry at you. God is angry at you. Verse 12. If he turn not, he will what? W-H-E-T. His sword... He hath bent his bow and made it ready. Verse 13. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Arrows of death, dead in trespasses and sins. Okay? Romans chapter 1. Last God of the Old Testament. Oh, you rightly divide the word of truth, huh? <laughs> Yeah, well, how are we saved? How, what's salvation? It's uh, by grace through faith from the Garden of Eden to Revelation. <laughs> okay. Okay. Goodbye. You can go to hell. You can go to hell. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Go, go, go. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 23. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You got a Bible depending on which one, uh, of Christ isn't in there, is it? Especially if you got a non-inspired vomitus. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. And Jew in context is reference unto the Hebraic Jews, not Hamites or Japhethites. Okay? 
For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith. Faith in what? Faith uh, under the Old Testament, you know. The law is not a faith. But the faith in the Old Testament was that God would honor you for doing what he prescribed in the law. Okay? So from faith to faith. From faith to faith. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith when it was under law to faith, this dispensation. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Oh, you easy believers, you're going to burn in hell. You Catholics, you're going to burn in hell. You German Catholics, you Muslims, okay, you Taoists, you Shintoists, you Buddhists, you uh, Hinduists, okay? You're going to burn in hell. You are. All right? You are. Because that's not the way. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. You're holding the truth in, uh, in unrighteousness. What truth? What truth is that? That there is something out there beyond this. There is a God. That's truth. Islam says there is a God. That is truth. But they hold it in unrighteousness because Islam's God is Satan. Rome's God is Satan. <laughs> Buddha's God is yourself, Satan. Okay? You get it? You hear the truth and you reject it because you're your own God. Get it? Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. See, this is another thing why the Trinity is such a vomitous, vile, disgusting heresy. Because, well, you, you, I mean, and I, I love that other religions attack the Trinity. I love that. And some of them do a really good job at it. There are some atheists and a lot, some Muslims that really do a really good job at attacking the Trinity. And hey, hey that's good. <laughs> that's good. The Trinity is a joke. One God <laughs> means three people. And then you got idiots like David Wood. If you don't know who he is, great. Leave it that way. Who, who that, that guy's a, that guy, a Christian, did a video. I got it on the channel. Uh, I'll, I'll put that in the description box for you. Get, get a load of this guy. David Wood, okay? This guy, in a video, did a video where he was wearing a dress and putting on lipstick. What's wrong with that? Um, man shall not per, uh, wear what pertains unto a woman, and a woman shall not per, uh, put on what pertains to a man. For all who do such are an abomination. You know, uh, Monty Python, the kids in the hall. It's funny, right? Saturday Night Live. It's funny, right? It's an abomination. What does that mean? They were cross-dressing. But hey, woke! Evil is good and good is evil. But see, you and I were made in the image of God. You and I have a spirit, we have a soul. We have a body. I've heard atheists debate, well, man doesn't have a soul. So if man doesn't have a soul, then we are an animal. Man was made in the image of God. In the image of God created he them. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Guess what? Fido, your dog, doesn't have a soul. Okay, Fritz, your cat, doesn't have a soul. Okay, Bambi doesn't have a soul. Mankind are the only ones made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. And the atheist comes around, well, man doesn't have a soul. So, of course, atheists, evolutionists, think we're animals. 
So, of course, they're going to protest that man has a soul. Well, we can't see the soul. You're right. You're right. You can't. You can't see my spirit either. You're right. You can't. This is what you're looking at. You can't see who I really am. Who I really am, my spirit and soul, which are housed in this sagging sin suit. Okay? You're right. You can't see the soul. do not mean you don't have one. Even you detestable, grotesque, wicked, filthy, vile, vomitous, Jesuit, atheistic, Islamic, whatever you are, however disgusting, evil you are like that guy from Blackpool, no matter how evil you are, you're mankind. You have a spirit. You have a soul. You have a body. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus Christ was God the Father. God the Father was, is the soul. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The Word made flesh is the body. See, they saw Jesus Christ, and you're going to be able to see Jesus Christ uh, during the kingdom of heaven and when he comes back with us at his second coming. Okay? But see there, again, God is a spirit. Okay? He, was, he is the soul of the Godhead. Okay? And the Holy Ghost is the spirit. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. Same rocket science. This is very simple to get. But see, Catholicism comes with that stupid, ridiculous trinity. Okay? We're not gods. Okay? God has given us to know what is good and evil. Why do you think there are so many Bibles out there that contradict each other? Okay? See, the authorized version, son, is perfect stamp. So you're without excuse. You yourself are your own witness that God exists. Because you have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. I, hey, hey, evolutionist, idiot, and uh, self-theist, you want to say there is no soul? That's, go ahead. You know, smoke what Dave's giving you. Roll up another one. Roll you up a big fatty. And get yourself some John Daniels to knock it down with you. Okay, go ahead. It doesn't matter. You're going to give an account of yourself to God. And then everything that you rejected is going to be personified right in front of you. And by that time, by that time it's too late, buddy. Okay? Because that when they knew God, you, you, you heard about him. You know about him, right? You just know. It's like, okay, there's a God out there. It's me, <laughs> most of you. Okay? But just a mental knowledge. Not descending the 18 inches from that lump that's three foot above your buttocks down the 18 inches to your heart. Okay? Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. God made you. But yet, you want to believe? <laughs> millions and millions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away when puppies were the oldest animal. But became vain in their imaginations. This is the thing about imagination. Hmm. And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But anti, to be against and replace, you are your own God. This, this needs to be driven home, brother, sister. Because distraction upon distraction from Christianity isn't getting to the heart of the issue. Explaining it. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God 
into an image made like to corruptible man, first thing that is mentioned there, and to birds and the four-footed beasts and creeping things. In Ephesians chapter 2, which we covered in uh, uh, Wednesday's video, but we're covering it again, because this is the theme that we are talking about. Okay? Like I said, brother, it's there's so much detail going into it. I mean, you can make a 11-minute uh, salvation video and think, no, <laughs> no, no. It, I mean, you can. Okay, I knew one young man who, you know, it's like, well, just cover the basics. <clears throat> no, no, no. And, and I'm sure you, I'm, I'm addressing a brother. Uh, I'm sure you've already figured it out, you know, seen it's like, okay, it's like do a video, a salvation video. You're like, let's keep it short and sweet. But by the time the Lord and you go through that, you got pages. It's like, and it's not difficult. The hard part is getting over yourself. And see, that therein is what where the scripture comes in to prove to the people who don't want to hear it that you need a savior and you can't save yourself. That's that's the rub. That's the rub. Ephesians 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. And you hath he quickened, made alive, who are dead in trespasses and sin. Lost people, all you of other religions, it doesn't matter. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? See, it, Islam, for example, tells you that Islam's the only way. <laughs> That's of Satan. But they're not, you know, saying openly that there are other paths to God, even though in the Quran it clearly says, gives credence to Rome, which the one guy never answered the question. Why don't Muslims go after Rome? Have you ever wondered that? Why don't Muslims go after Rome? They did many years ago. Why didn't they, you know, with their armies with about Jerusalem and whatnot? Why don't they go after Rome today? Why don't they? <laughs> yeah. Where in time past he worked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's Satan. Satan. Prince of the power of the air. Airwaves, microwaves, Wi-Fi, <laughs> which I use. Okay? The prince of the power of the air, the, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Ye are of your father the devil. You reject the gospel. You are your own God. You are of your father the devil. I don't think I'm my own God. Look. You're your own standard for deciding what is right and wrong, not the Lord. You are your own God. You are of your father the devil. Period. Period. Hence, God's angry at you. The spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. You, you're, you're not saved? Okay? You're doing some other thing, like Shintoism or whatever it is? Uh, you're a child of wrath. God doesn't love you. Look, Christian! You go around telling people God loves them, you're preaching another Jesus and another gospel. You're lying to them. Dude, you're lying to people. When you say God loves you, that's a lie. And it's a perpetuated lie. God doesn't love you. God's not angry. Yes, he is. He's angry at the wicked every day. We saw that in Psalms. We saw that in Romans. And we see this right here in Ephesians. What does that mean? That passes dispensational lines. You're not saved. God's wrath is for you. God doesn't love you. Get that through your head. And it is an abomination 
when you are encountering people that says, God loves you. That's an abomination. Because it's a lie. We're proving it to you. Ephesians, no, wait, wait, wait. But now this thing about judging. Judging. Oh, oh, you talk, you talk about something that sets me off nowadays. Oh, like I said, our dear Croatian brother, uh, whenever, if, if ever, um, you hear about him, uh, he, he's going to be a little bit more gentle about this than I am. <laughs> he will be. Uh, praise the Lord for it. Okay, like I said, I, 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 I as you can see, I, I'm not afraid to, um, I'm not afraid to get combative if, if needs be. Brawler means in physicality. I'm not going to get physical with you unless you try to be physical with me. Then I'll fight you back. But I, I'm not a, I will not hesitate to get nose to nose to you, especially when it comes to matters of truth. I, 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 won't, I won't hesitate. Okay? <laughs> I, fear man. I fear the Lord, not man. Okay? But don't judge me. You can't judge me. You're not God. So we can't judge anything, huh? Then how are you to know what is good and is evil? Hmm? See, you know what is good and evil by the authorized version. And because you judge yourself first according to this perfect standard, hello, genius, hello, genius, that means that you are to judge others. Okay? Another, another telltale sign that someone is a fraud... When they come with it, well, you can't judge me. Like that guy with the, uh, the well-fed man with the hot dog on his head. Saying, Jesus loves you and you can't judge me. He's a, he's a heretic. Hey, hey, buddy, you ain't going to see me. You're lost. You're lost. You're in the lie of God loves you unconditionally. Don't judge me. 1 Corinthians. No, oh, uh, wait, 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 wait a second. Um, 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. I got a little ahead of myself. Judging is the next thing we're going to uh, uh, talk about, but we're still talking about the thing about God being angry at the wicked. Okay? We are to judge. We are to judge. All right? But 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Oh, it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. Everything blends together. There's no distinction. Okay? Got to be baptized in water to be saved. Uh, you got to forgive in order to be forgiven. You're not rightly dividing the word. If you do not rightly divide the word of truth, Okay, if you do not rightly divide the word of truth, by the way, okay, you are handling the word of God deceitfully. Stephen Anderson, perfect example. Someone who doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. Most Christians do not rightly divide the word of truth. What does that mean? You're, you're uh, handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. And hey, Buddhist, verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. So, you're of your father the devil if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel. And go up some other way. Uh, you, you're of your father the devil. Satan, who's the little G God of this world, has blinded your mind. You are your own God. See how that works? Ephesians 5. Verses 3 on verse 7. We covered these yesterday. Not yesterday. Wednesday. Okay? Ephesians 5, 3 on 7. 
of fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be named, once named among you as become a saint. That's the things lost people do. But see, saved people, saints, can do the things that lost people can do. <laughs> all things are lawful for you, right? As you go and deck the halls, pal. Huh. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater. And, and you look at that, all of those are forms of idolatry. Because it's all about I, 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 me, me, me. Okay? Hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God? Let no man deceive you with vain words. God's not angry at you. God loves you. Believe and receive. Hey, you're a lot. Hey, go to Christ's church. Huh? What is it, the eightfold path of enlightenment? Hey, you can be reincarnated as a rat. <laughs> you got to live according to the Tao. <laughs> this is not funny. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Wrath of God. You reject the gospel. God's wrath is on you. God's wrath is for you. God doesn't love you. His love is there to be had at Calvary. You got to make the right choice to go there. And once you go down there, he'll take care of the rest. He's the one who saves you. But he's not going to force you to go that way. And there are those out there who say that he does. Those are the guys you got to watch out for. Because if you're not making the decision who is God is, then you are a robot. And then that love on your part isn't genuine. Of your own. It's given to you. See. See. God's a God of authenticity. God's authentic. And he wants authentic love from you who he created. And hey, numbskull, idiot, okay? If God is imparting to you these things, then it's not your own genuine love and affection to the Lord, is it? But hello. Okay, hello. Okay. Ephesians 5, verse 3 and verse 7, we already read that. And Colossians 3, verses 5 on to verse 7. Colossians 3, 5 on to verse 7. Mortify, kill, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And again, all those are forms of idolatry. Okay? Mortify, kill it, put it down. Morte, morte, death, die, kill. Okay? Doesn't mean literally like you lop off your leg. No, we're supposed to be at war with this. But do you do what Oscar Wilde says? It's like, hey, why don't you get rid of a temptation? Give into it. Brilliant. As he's roasting in hell. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. That's what we once were. God does not love you. You reject the gospel. You reject the Lord Jesus Christ. God's wrath is for you. God does not love you. God loved. Past tense. God gave. Past tense. I, I don't care who you are. Whenever you see one of these wicked Christians... God loves you, eh. and don't judge me. Don't judge me. First Corinthians chapter six. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. You can't judge me. You're not God. Uh, but I have what God said, and I judge myself according to what God said, and that means I judge you according to what God said. Because I have a perfect standard. 
the authorized version. Hence, I am able to judge myself according to Scripture in you. But see, again, why do people say that? The judgment always to defend themselves uh, because they have done something that they know that they shouldn't have done. When does don't judge me ha uh, have legitimacy? When does it have simple? And what you eating? See, and we're going to address this also about the law. Okay? See, the dietary restrictions that were under the law have been lifted today. You can read about that in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Okay? It's not in Acts with rise, Peter, kill, and eat. It's, uh, that's not that. Okay? It's in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4 where the dietary restriction has been lifted. You can eat shellfish. You can eat pork. And, and, and hey, you know, if you, you guys who are against pork, you're missing out. But, here's the thing. I, as a saint, I cannot judge someone else for wanting to be a vegan. Okay? A vegan can't judge me for being a meditarian. So, in that context, in that context, if, I, if I'm sitting there eating a cheeseburger wrapped in bacon and Canadian bacon with some squid and scallop on it and shrimp on it and just with smothered in mayonnaise, I'm going to have a heart attack. But, I mean, if I'm chomping on that, and you got somebody who's a vegetarian coming around. It's like that's that's a that you shouldn't be eating. That's like, hey, don't judge me. And that you can find in Romans fourteen. In that context, you can say that. Yes, you can. Like I said, you. I mean, you're vegan. If I were to come to you and judge you for you know what you're doing isn't scriptural. Blah blah blah. You could rightly say to me, hey, don't judge me because I'm eating, you know, plants. As I could, hey, don't judge me because I'm eating porky pig. And also the other one, which heretics love to worm their worship of Satan into. The day when you worship the Lord. See, under the law, the Shabbat, Saturday was the scripturally uh, equated day when Israel was to uh, give to the Lord. One day a week. The, sh the, Shabbat, uh, the Shabbat, the Sabbath, which is Saturday, not Sunday. And uh, there, 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 there's this, this Calvinistic um, Christian Sabbath. Sabbath is heresy. Like, this is the Lord day. This is sacrilege. Uh, now, the Lord's Day scripturally is a reference unto Sunday. Sure it is. But, if I want to designate Tuesday as our day to just give unto the Lord. We give every day unto the Lord. But, Scripture tells us that we are to allot at least one day out of the seven. Okay? We are to allot at least one day as saints unto the Lord. Okay? What day that is doesn't matter as it did under the law, which was the Shabbat. Okay? But Christians say, well, Sunday. Uh, that's contrary. What, yeah, they say it's the Christian Sabbath, which is Sunday. That's, that's, that's uh, also what Rome teaches. And a lot of Calvinists and these denominations all hold to that on Sunday. Okay? Scripturally, if I want that day to where I'm going to worship the Lord to be Tuesday one week and Thursday the next, scripturally, you can't judge me on that. Here, here's the grotesque thing. People will use that truth in order to justify paganism. Again, their worship of the pagan, satanic, Roman Catholic December 25th. They will cling to that truth in order to justify paganism. You guys disgust me. 
You do. If you come out and say, hey, all things are lawful for me. It's a tradition of man. It's Roman. Fine. I I'd lay off. But no, you guys go to war over that and call us saints. It's like, hey, whoa, dude. You're, you're using the truth to justify that which is pagan. Because they, they bring that up. It's like they go to Romans 14. It's like, well, I choose on the December 25th to give that day unto the Lord. And scripturally, they're right. But see, the undercurrent there, people, you're not doing that out of a whatever, you're doing it to justify the traditions. Because you have so great memories when you were a kid. And you know, you know, you know deep down in that thing you call a heart that it was created by Rome, that it's all satanic, okay? And that it was a Ruckman knight who set you straight on that, pal. Yeah. 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 But that's a great example of how people will use the truth to justify something wicked like that. But, at the end of the day, like I said, if I wanted to, if I want to worship the Lord on Tuesday, one week, and then Thursday the next, and you, <laughs> Christian, you ought to be worshiping on Sunday, the Lord's Day. Uh, let's read Romans chapter 14, okay? Uh, you can't judge, don't judge me on that. That's scriptural. Okay? All right? Those are the two incidences legitimately when someone could say, hey, don't judge me. Okay? Don't judge me. But see, whenever you hear someone else say it, okay, apart from that, true context, it's always to justify themselves in a sin that they know they have done, which is contrary to God. And then they get really color colorful, like that disgusting uh, cross-dressing Calvinist sky out. Okay? There, you heard him. Uh, the, the, the devil took all the pictures, the evidence that he's a cross-dresser. Uh, but that, that guy from England, he keeps everybody's stuff. Okay, so, but anyway, they come to 1 Corinthians. Okay, they come to 1 Corinthians. They go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, but we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're supposed to judge. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 1 on to verse 6. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints, saved people, shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? You can't judge me, you're not God. You're right, I'm not God, but I have what God said. And God says, I'm supposed to judge me and you according to the scripture. You go on someplace, pal. Okay? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? You can't judge me. Don't judge me. You can't judge me. You're not God. You shut up. And you go to hell, pal. Okay? Oh, then you talk about something that grinds my gears, boy. If they judge me, they judge me. What are you trying to hide? If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. That's the body, not a building. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. And hey, Christianity, don't judge. <laughs> well, yeah, there isn't a wise person among Christianity, one who fears the Lord. They're in. Okay? And if there are, they're a saint, not a Christian. 
Drop it! But brother go to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. And you see that with Christianity. And the, the unbelievers are like, look at these Christians, man. They're suing each other, each other because his dog went on his property or something like that. Trivial kind of stuff, you know? Make your part. Make your part. But see, here's something that you need to remember. In Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2, see, when the Lord saves you, He seals you with Himself today in this dispensation. It wasn't like that under the law, and it will not be like that in the time of Jacob's trouble, except for 144,000 Jews. Under the law, as with the time of Jacob's trouble, the Holy Ghost and the Lord as that Spirit can come and go, come and go. Today, this dispensation, you go the way of the cross and the Lord saves you. You come to Him broken, contrite, and in fear of Him. Call upon His name and He saves you. He seals you with Himself. Every saved saint has the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, living within them. And He is perfect. We ain't. He will guide you into all truth. Okay? And he will guide you into proper judgment through his perfect standard. But see, when you got two lost people trying to judge themselves off of the criteria of that which is earthly, sensual, devilish. For example, you got a Taoist try, uh, judging a Shintoist. Or you got a Buddhist trying to judge a... Uh, um, uh, Hinduist. You got a Catholic trying to judge uh, a Calvinist. Okay. Th those are all false. So, Romans 2, verses 1 on to verse 11. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man. Wherefore thou, where whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. See, Romans 1, 2, and 3 are written in the style that it is to address you, lost person. To address to you your need for a Savior and also that you are incapable of saving yourself. And see, easy, believe him, uh, easy believism omits these things and goes to a portion in Romans 3 right after the Romans 1, 2, and 3, verse up to verse 18. Okay, they omit those things. All right? But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. This is basically the pot calling the kettle black. Two lost people judging one another off a criteria based upon themselves that they are their own God. Two lost people judging themselves as their own gods. On their own standard. That's what this means. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Yeah, you two, you two lost people, you both think you're your own God. So you're both going to judge yourself according to your own criteria that you're your own God. That's what this is talking about. You're stupid. Okay? I'm not going to put it to you kindly. You're stupid. No brains. Okay? What's your standard of judgment? Yourself. You are your own God. Or or the catechism. That's from Satan. Or the, the, the book of... Or, or the Tao Te Ching. Hey, guess what? That's from Satan. Okay? All right? Do you get me? Are you getting this? Let's continue. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness... And forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, but after thy hardness and impotent, impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. This is the standard that you're going to be judged by. This is what we saints judge ourselves by and judge you by. Okay? Who will render to every man according to his deeds? 
To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality in her life. But unto them that are contentious Christians who call rightly dividing the word of truth heresy. Okay? Self-theists, contentious, okay? All those easy believism people are pretty much contentious about the truth. And do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, and there is none good but God. To the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. And unless you're a Hamite, or a Pentecostal, or seen the Lord, or a Calvinist, uh, other than that, that's sarcasm, by the way, for there is no respect to persons with God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. This is, this is where these guys really like to go and say, see, you can't judge me. But wait, 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 wait. 1 Corinthians 4, verses 1 and verse 5. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Or of man's judgment. Man's judgment is flawed. Okay? Man's judgment. God's judgment is here. The authorized version. Okay? Man's judgment. The Tao Te Ching. The Catechism. The Book of Discipline. The Quran. A Bible. Okay? That's man's judgment. Yay. I judge not mine own self. What is Paul saying? Paul judged himself by the standard of the word, not by his own standard, which all of you do. Not all of you. I'm not talking to you saints. You're your own God. You decide what is right and what is wrong. Hence, you are judging your own self by your own standard. That's what Paul is talking about. I judge not mine own self. I don't judge myself by my own standard. See? I don't judge myself. Who judges me? God. How does God judge me? By the authorized version of the scripture. The same thing I judge you by. Okay? But with me... Okay, we already read that. For I know nothing by myself. Paul's like, I, hey, my judgment, my own personal judgment, if not based upon the scripture, is flawed. Yet am I not hereby justified? But he that judgeth me is the Lord. How does God judge us? It's right here, Jack. It's right here. See, that's what you people don't like to acknowledge. They say, see, only one who can judge me is God. Yeah, he judges you through the scriptures, Jack. You judge yourself, and hence, I am, to I am to judge you. And I'm going to judge you by the same standard I judge myself by. The scripture. God's perfect, inerrant, given by his various word. And you got these fruitcakes out there. It's like, you can't judge me. God can judge me. Don't judge me. Oh, God can judge me. Yes. You're right. God is judging you through the authorized version of the scriptures. You judge yourself and you judge others through the perfect standard. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Oh, this they love this one. It's like the only time you can judge is at a second coming. Uh, no, this is talking about when someone gets saved. We already read Romans chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 11, about two lost people basing their judgment upon their own standard themselves. So, this is saying in verse 5, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, 
How does the Lord come unto you when he saves you? When you go the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name. And he come to you, and he save you, and he seals you with himself. Hey, guess what, buddy? The Lord's come. So, you can't judge rightly without the Lord. Who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness, you know those things you don't like other people to know, and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall every man have praise of God. Paul is saying, you can't, don't judge by your own standard. I don't even judge myself by my own standard. Because guess what? If I judge myself by my own standard, I could justify a lot of things. Oh, you, you sleazy believers, especially, and you King James Bible believing Christians, deck the halls, pal, you know what I'm talking about. When you judge it according to your own standard. See, I don't judge myself according to my standard, because my standard is flawed. That's what Paul is talking about. Judge nothing before the time, before you're saved. Because two lost people, judging each other on what? On what, what are they basing that off of? Their own selves. What they deem as right and wrong. He shall be as God. Do you see how that works? Us saints, here's our judgment, the authorized version of the scripture. We judge ourselves first. Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, in judging ourselves by this standard, you, you bet your rear end, boy, I'm going to judge you by this standard also. <laughs> and Romans 7 Romans 7 your video is too long huh? <laughs> go away go away go away Romans 7 verses 14 on to 21 Romans 7 verses 14 on to verse 21 For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. Carnal means fleshly, sold under sin. For that which I do I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. You could be the most self-righteous guy on earth, trying to keep the law or do whatever. For that which I do I allow not, sin. For what I would, that do I not. Not sin. But what I hate, sin, that do I. Yeah, again, people, you've heard of people saying you got to stop sinning. Those guys are jerks. They're idiots. Paul missed that memo. Uh, okay, if anyone claiming to be a Christian or whatever, saying you got to stop sinning, don't sin anymore, laugh at them. Go ahead and kick a little dirt on them, too, while you're at it. Seriously, they're, they're a joke. They're, they're, get away from them. Don't, don't take them seriously at all. Okay? If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. The law. Through the law is the knowledge of sin. Well, we're going to talk about that next. Don't worry about that. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Ah, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. The spirit indeed is willing, the flesh profiteth nothing. And you had Pope Francis recently saying that everybody's good. He, he can get away with that because you people are so warped and deluded to what God actually says. For the good that I would, I do not. Not sin. But the evil which I would not sin, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law 
that when I would do good, evil is present with me. How would you know that unless you judge? I find in the law, I know that the law is good. Paul is judging himself upon a standard, a perfect standard. Do you understand? Do you understand? How do you know what's good? Huh? Don't judge me. How do you know what's good then? Oh, you're Jesuit uh, pastor, huh? No. See, Paul in Romans 7. See, y'all y'all need to really grasp Romans 7. You need to spend time. Uh, when uh, brethren and I talk who are going through struggles, uh, you know, fighting with the sin suit, making stupid decisions, hey, you come to here. You come to here, Romans 7. Okay? See, right there, Romans 7 shows you what he was talking about in uh, 1 Corinthians 4. He doesn't judge himself. No, he goes to the Word of God and judges himself. And since we judge ourselves by this standard, we are supposed to. We already read 1 Corinthians 6. We are supposed to judge others. By the same standard, we judge ourselves. The authorized script, uh, authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Watch out for these morons. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Make me sick. But the law. Okay. Oh, oh, these people, you got to keep the law today. You got to keep the Ten Commandments. Okay. Got to keep the law. And what's funny haha, is atheists, for example, will judge Christianity. Christianity is a fraud. Okay? But they will judge Christianity off of the very Ten Commandments, which we can't keep. Christianity, Christianity is fraudulent in itself. But see, when you go to judge something by the Ten Commandments, see, you guys, number one, you guys aren't even attempting to do that standard yourselves. Number one, talk about hypocrisy. But see, you don't understand what the purpose of the Ten Commandments was. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Brethren, people, you have any questions about the what about the law? You know, you got you got devils like Mark the Messenger, uh, Paul Washer, uh, Ray Comfort, and all and a whole slew. Uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lion Fart, uh, Eric Lionheart. You know, you got to keep the law and the commandments and stuff like that. Uh, Jews, Hebraic Jews, today it's like, well, we got to keep it. No, you don't. No, you don't. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. You're a Hebraic Jew. You do not have to keep the law to be saved and stay saved. Okay, you do not. Our dear brother James fell for that one. And he's in heaven. And he wrote the book of James. Okay? But Galatians 3, 20 under verse 25. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Spirit, soul, and body. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. And, and, where, and where is that? Um, what is that in Galatians 3 here? Uh, verses 12 on to... Uh, where was that? Uh, verse 12 in Galatians 3. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. The law, the law is written for you in the scripture. You don't need faith in order to keep the law because it's written for you. Your faith was in God that he would honor you for keeping the law. That's how that works. 
The law is not a man. You can read what the law is right here. You don't need it because it's right there. The law is not a faith. Okay? All right? All right. Are, are you with me? Okay? So let's continue. Is the law there then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Given life. The law is there to show you the perfect requirements of God. And guess what? Guess what? I don't care who you think you are. You can't keep the law perfectly, totally. You can't. You've ever coveted? You say, no, you're a liar. You ever lied? You ever cheated? You ever stolen? You ever thought about, oh boy, if I weren't in this situation, I'd bludgeon you to death with a bookend or a tire iron? Of course you have. Who hasn't? Unless you're a perfect individual. I won't even go there. <laughs> I won't even go there. But of course you have. See, the Ten Commandments is God's perfect standard in order to be right with him. And it was given to man to show man that we can't do that. Hence, we need someone, a savior. Let's keep reading, shall we? But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. And we are not without law as saints. We are under the law to Christ, which is found within the book of Romans, the Pauline epistles, the doctrine specific for us today. Read Romans chapter 13. Okay, the, the, the New Testament after the death, burial, and resurrection, when the New Testament began there, Tom. Okay, that's, you know, that is what we base our stuff off of today. Okay, all right? We are saved by His grace through faith. The Ten Commandments we don't have to keep. We couldn't do it anyway. But, bef but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up onto that faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Again, more proof they were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. They were not. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 to 11. <laughs> A lot of these guys. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor where they affirm. Like Mark the Messenger. But we know that the law is good if it be if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this. That the law is not made for a righteous man. But for the lawless and disobedient. For the ungodly and for sinners. For unholy and profane. For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. For manslayers. For whoremongers. For them that defile themselves with mankind. Sodomites. For men stealers. For liars. For perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. See, we can't keep the law. We, we, we can't keep the law, dear friend. Okay? You wouldn't have known that it was, you're not supposed to covet unless the law told you, don't covet. You wouldn't know that adultery was wrong, thou shalt not commit adultery. Hmm? Thou shalt not kill. And all people, well, hey, there's a lot of killing. Uh, premeditated, like murder, okay? Like abortion. War, hey, war happens. Okay? War happens. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But like premeditated murder, you know, like running someone over, bludgeoning them to death with a baseball bat or something like that. Okay, uh, that no, that's that's what you wouldn't have known that unless it was written for you in the law. 
and see, thou shalt not covet, okay, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, shall not set up false gods or idols, <laughs> like yourself, okay, that's why we don't keep the Sabbath today, a Sabbath was a sign unto the Hebraic Jewish people, which was undone, the elect day was the Sabbath under the law, uh, any day you want to worship the Lord, today is fine by him today. Okay, we already covered that. The law was there to show you that at your best, your vanity, you could not keep the perfect standard of God. Hence, you need a Savior. You need a Savior. Go to Romans chapter 9. But see, what happens is, and see also too, Rome gives you a law. The Catechism. Islam. Oh boy, they got the Sharia law. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. Shintoism has a law. Taoism has a law. Buddhism has a law. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I, me, me, me. Okay? All right? Romans chapter 9, verses 31 on to verse 33. Now, Israel is being used as the example. You'll hear people say, well, this is... Paul is writing doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble. No, he wasn't. The Pauline epistles is doctrine specific for us today. Okay? All right? People will say that to try to justify sin and to justify their stupid just believe and receive. Okay? But Romans 9, 31 on to verse 33. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the righteousness of the law. Wherefore? Because they sought it not of faith, and the law is not of faith. But as it were by the works of the law, you did this, this, and this. So your God owes you one. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion, <coughs> stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Romans 10, verses 1 on verse 4. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now remember, the significance of him mentioning Israel is that the law was given unto them. Not Ishmael, and not to the Hamites, not to Japheth, but to the Hebraic Jews, who came out of Shem. Okay? For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and here it is, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And this is when you can prove the easy believers fake. I'm, as, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. I am saved because I just believe. So you're establishing your own righteousness apart from the righteousness of God. And like I said, with easy believers, you can, you can irritate these guys really, <laughs> really easy. Really easy. You know, but, and it always comes out. I'm, you know, I'm not as bad as that guy. When a saint is like, I'm worse than everybody. Okay? I save myself by my own belief. Lord, save me. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And see, the very law that you self-theists like to attack, and of course you're going to, I mean, and that's, see, that's the point. The law was there to show you your inadequacy and your need for a Savior. Okay? But see, here's, Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Okay? Proof. Categorical proof that you today in this dispensation do not have to keep the law to be saved, be right with God, or anything. Okay? Acts chapter 15, verses 7, on to verse 11. Hmm. 
This is at the Jerusalem conference, by the way. It doesn't say that in scripture, but. And when they, and the problem was that, some, well, let's read that. In um, Acts chapter 15, verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Being circumcised. Now, most men nowadays, especially in America, are circumcised. Okay, We won't get into that. But see, what's being referenced here is that they got to keep the law to be saved. Okay? And, uh, and verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed. And the Pharisees put tradition above scripture. Okay? But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Gotta keep, gotta keep the Ten Commandments today. You couldn't do that if you tried. And hey, I keep the commandments. I was confirmed. I was baptized. I, 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 me, 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 me. Similar to Buddhism. How they, these people who today say, you got to keep the commandments. Well, I keep the commandments. No, you don't. No, you don't. You keep the Ten Commandments perfectly, huh? You lie, you lie, you lie. And I'd say that 12 inches from anyone's face. And when there had, verse 7 on verse 11. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. God is not a God of uh, God is not a respecter of persons today. Time of Jacob's trouble, yes. Under the law, yes. Today, it's not a respecter of persons. Okay? And see, when you got some putts coming around telling you you got to keep the law, they're telling you God is a respecter of persons. You got to be elect because of your skin color. Or you got to be a nut job uh, Pentecostal convert or uh, saying, oh, I've seen the Lord or I speak in tongues. Now, blah, 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 all the way to hell. Okay? Now, therefore, this, this, this is where you go. Mark, mark this in your little file cabinet. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? We couldn't do it. Moses couldn't keep the law perfectly. Samuel couldn't. Job couldn't, but then again, the law wasn't written at that time. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Peter's saying right there, we couldn't keep the law. But we believe that through the grace, through faith, our faith is our answer to God's grace. That wit. Okay? But we believe that through grace, through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. And let's end this with James 2. And, and the, you know, Acts 15, that's all you got to remember. Uh, I mean, you can go, uh, go, to, uh, go to Galatians 3. Okay? <laughs> Galatians 3, Acts 15, and James 2. Okay? James 2. Then we will be done. James 2. Verses 10 and 11. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty in all. Um, so, 
do you if you you're gonna say you don't offend in one point? No, I don't. You just lied. You you just did. I don't sin anymore. Uh, you just lied. <laughs> okay. I keep the whole commandments. No, you don't. You just lied. Guess what? You just broke one. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said, also said, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. You don't covet. Hmm? Have you committed adultery? If you look upon an adult, a woman and lust after her in your heart, you have committed adultery with her in your heart already? Huh? Have you killed? Not literally with a gun, baseball bat, or a car, but you sure would have bludgeoned that individual to death, wouldn't you have, huh? And covet. Come on. You never coveted. Huh? The only one who kept the law perfectly just happened to be God the Father. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He's the only one who kept the law because he's God. God was the only one who could keep the Ten Commandments perfectly. And those were given unto man to show man their weakness, their frailness, and to show them that they can't save themselves and that they're not their own gods. That is going to be it for this video. Longer video today. <laughs> Thank you for watching this if you do. Um, I hope you lost people get your head out your rear ends. Because the time that is coming, the time of Jacob's trouble, you're not going to survive. You're not going to survive. Number one, the time of Jacob's trouble is for Jacob, Israel. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I, I do think there will be Gentiles saved during the time of Jacob's trouble. I, I do. But um, it's for Jacob, Israel. And despite what Roman Catholicism wants you to believe, the church hasn't replaced Israel. That is going to be it for this little video. If, I, if I've offended you, good. If you have questions, there will be links in the description box. But if you're just going to shoot off at the mouth and not even look at the arguments or consider, go to hell. Don't let the door hit you in the buttocks on the way out. Okay? Thank you for watching. If you do, we love you. Keep us in your prayers and pray for each other. We'll see you in the next video.